Major General Bob Scales calling the September 11th attack on our Libya consulate a premeditated act of war. He says the United States should have taken a more forceful action. Major General Bob Scales joins us. Good evening, sir. Hi, how are you, Greta? Very well. I, I suspect from a military standpoint, there are two ways to look at this. One with 2020 hindsight, what we should have done, and then the view is during the course of the event, what would have been the, sort of the expected reasonable things a good military commander would have done. So can you give me both answers? Well, I'll tell you, uh, there's an old military tenant that says when uh, the events are uncertain and ambiguous, you march to the sound of the guns. Uh, now, in this case, marching is 400 air miles from Siganella to Benghazi. It's about a two-hour flight. But, apparent, but according to Jennifer Griffin, whose reporting has been magnificent, uh, there was a Delta team on the ground in Siganella. There were AC-130 Spectre gunships, and there were fighter aircraft with ISR pods on the ground. Had they been launched perhaps as soon as news of this attack started, perhaps they might have been over the target. And let me tell you, Greta, if you're a mortar crew uh, in Benghazi and you hear a Spectre gunship overhead, the first thing you do is pack up and run away, Greta. What is your theory as to why nothing was done? I mean, there were, there, I mean, I mean, I, I guess there's probably some mobilization that we don't know about, but that there was that it doesn't seem like any any military actually sort of made contact on the ground with any of these people. Well, there is a thing called the fog of war, uh, and my information or my sources tell me that there was this narrative that was floating around in the theater of war that said that this wasn't an attack. Uh, uh, on the embassy as it was going on. It was merely, uh, the narrative was that it was merely a mob action. And there's a tendency sometimes in the field for you to believe the narrative and to look through the lens of a, of a drone and look down and maybe you see something that really isn't there. Perhaps that's what happened. But the bottom line is that the United States had plenty of firepower, very discreet, very lethal firepower that could have broken up this attack uh, on the embassy early on and had plenty of time to get there, but uh, they were, as Jennifer Griffin says so eloquently, they were told to stand down. Uh, right, I don't th think there's this any doubt had this, go ahead. Th this was not a short fight though, I mean, uh, this, was, this went on for about seven hours, right. I mean, so there's, there's a little more extra time to think than if this were a 15 minute fight. I'm, I'm right. curious, um, that drone, there were two drones over it, how, um, how well can these drones identify at night what's going on on the ground? Well, these drones have multiple sensors, as you know. The most useful at night is called an IR sensor, an infrared sensor. And through this, you can see through the night, you can see through the dust and the fog of battle. You can spot individuals on the ground. They appear as tiny little black specks on your screen. You could clearly see, for instance, a, a mortar section setting up outside the annex. You could see groups of people marching on the annex in some type of formation. And you could clearly track what you see through the drone to the information that you're, that you're getting from the man on the spot on, on, uh, on top of that annex. In addition, he had a, a, a laser target designator. This is a, a, a large binocular-like device that lases the target. So as soon as an AC-130 got overhead, he could pass that exact information to the aircraft, uh, one oh, a couple of 105-millimeter cannon rounds, and it's into mission. Unfortunately, Greta, that didn't happen. All right. Well, if you have an AC-130 over overhead, um, we, I mean, we certainly had time to get an AC-130 there. In fact, we could have launched. We could have sent one. We could have sent one and then just had it right. circle at you know at 40,000 feet right. and do nothing. But I mean, at least we would have had it in the area, so a decision could be made whether or not to take right. any action. Yeah, and, and that's an important point. You know, they say, well, the situation wasn't clear, it was ambiguous, we were getting constant information. Okay, that's fine. But the right answer is launch everything you have, put it in the air, and make your decisions and clarify the situation once these assets are in route. You don't wait to get the situation clarified before you launch uh, some type of rescue effort. And, and this, again, as you said, and as being said, uh, this firefight lasted seven hours. My information tells me that some of the people who were watching this firefight kept waiting for it to die down, waiting for the crowd to disperse. Well, when you have terrorists, they're not going to disperse. They have, a, they have their own war plan. They're going to mm. attack the embassy, then they're going to attack the annex, and they're going to continue to attack till something causes them to disperse, Greta. General, thank you, sir. Thank you.